Hi, I'm Ellen from the Chili Dog. Double knitting is one of those techniques that many knitters avoid because it creates a fabric that can look quite complicated. Both sides of the fabric appear to be knit. And if you're doing any sort of color work, like with my burst into bloom scarf, one side shows a positive image and the other side shows the negative image. Although double knit color work can require concentration, especially when you are working with a color chart, how you manipulate the two, two yarns you're working with may not be as challenging as you think. Both yarns are going to be managed with the same hand, and it's simply a matter of knitting a stitch with one color, bringing both yarns forward, then purling a stitch with the next color, and bringing both yarns back. Double knitting can be done either English style or continental style. And today, after we look at a cross section of a piece of double knit fabric, I'll demonstrate the mechanics of each style with a basic checkered swatch that I've already started. I won't be showing it in this video, but if you'd like to learn one way to cast on your stitches for double knitting, I'll include a link to my two color chained cast on video in the description. Let's get started. When you're double knitting, you're knitting with two strands of yarn and basically knitting two pieces of fabric at the same time on the same knitting needle. I've removed the knitting needle from a sample swatch that I was playing with and you can see how the stitches lay and create two very distinct pieces of fabric. Unlike stranded color work, with double knitting, you don't have to worry about anything like floats, and you also don't have to worry about how to keep the two fabrics connected, because it's going to happen naturally as you're changing which color is knit on the front of your fabric. This probably still looks a little bit intimidating, but as I said before, all we're going to do is knit a stitch with one color, bring both of the yarns forward, purl a stitch with the other color, and bring both yarns back. Even though it doesn't look like it, mechanically, double knitting is very similar to knit one, purl one ribbing. When you're double knitting, you need to pay attention to your salvage so that the sides of your two fabrics are connected. There are a variety of different ways to do this. I like to take care of the salvage at the beginning of each row so that I don't forget to do it at the end. I can begin by either slipping this first stitch purlwise or knitwise or I can knit the first stitch in the same color that it already is. Whichever way you choose, you should continue to do it at the beginning of every row. So today I think I'm going to knit that first stitch. Let me make sure my two yarns are separate and I'm just working with the blue one. Then I'll bring both of my yarns forward and my next stitch is a white purl. I'm going to insert my right needle into the stitch just to hold everything into place for a moment. But before I actually make that white purl, I need to link my two yarns together by crossing the blue one over the top of the white. So now when I make that white purl stitch, it holds the blue yarn in place and it ensures that the side of the fabric is closed. So I'm going to bring both of my yarns back and then I can get my hand set up to continue working. For English style knitting, it's easiest to manage your yarn if your index finger points down between the two strands so that the yarn you're knitting on the front side of the fabric 
is at the front and the yarn that you're purling the back fabric with is at the back. I can't exactly tension like I normally would for English knitting. So what I like to do is just wrap my fingers up around the yarns and hold them in place to tension. My first stitch is a knit. So I'll knit with my blue yarn. Bring both yarns forward. And then purl with the white. And bring both yarns back. Knit with the blue. Bring both yarns forward. Purl with the white. Bring bring both yarns back. And you'll notice when I get to a knit stitch, I'm working a fabric that is on the front and the yarn that is for the back fabric stays here out of the way at the back behind it, the stitch. When I bring both yarns forward, I'm purling a stitch that belongs to that back fabric. And as I purl it, the blue yarn is staying out of the way in front of it. Both yarns back. Knit. And my hand kind of is rotating here so that when I'm purling, my hand is more flat. When I bring it back to knit, my hand is kind of turned over. At some point, you have to switch colors on what is knit at the front. And I'm at that point right now. So now I'm transitioning and the front of my fabric is going to have white knit stitches. So I need to reposition the yarn with my right hand. So to do that, I'm just going to cross one yarn so that now that the white yarn is at the front and the blue is at the back it doesn't necessarily matter which direction you cross your yarns or twist them as you're going but whichever way you twist this time you should twist the opposite direction at the next color change and this just helps from keep your yarn from getting too tangled so in this case, I'm going to choose that all the way across my row, I'm going to move the blue yarn back and forth over the top of the white as I'm changing colors. And that helps keep my yarn from getting too tangled. So again, now I'm knitting with the white. Bring both yarns forward and purling with the blue. And when I get to the next color change, I need to reposition again. So I'm going to bring the blue over the white again. It doesn't necessarily matter, but if you keep alternating, then your yarn won't get as twisted up as you're knitting. When you're double knitting, you need to pay attention to your selvage so that the sides of your fabric are connected. And there are a variety of different ways to do this. I like to take care of the selvage stitches at the beginning of each row so that I don't forget to do it at the end. I can begin by slipping that first stitch, either purlwise or knitwise, or I can knit the first stitch in the same color as the stitch appears. Whichever way you choose, you should continue to do it at the beginning of every row. So I'm going to knit that first stitch in the blue and then bring both of my yarns forward. 
My next stitch is going to be a white purl and I'm going to insert my knitting needle into that stitch. But before I make the white purl, I'm going to link the two yarns together by crossing the blue yarn over the top of the white yarn. And what this does is when I make that purl stitch, it holds the blue yarn in place and it will ensure that the side of the salvage is closed. So I'll purl that stitch and then I can bring both of my yarns to the back so that I can get my hands positioned to knit the rest of the row. For continental style knitting, it's easiest to manage your yarn. If you put both yarns over your index finger so that the color you're knitting with on the front side of your fabric is closest to your hand and the color that you're purling with on the back side of your fabric is closest to your fingertip. Some knitters can manage and tension their yarn as normal just by holding them together. However, I find it a little bit easier if I separate the two yarns with my middle finger. So now that back yarn is going over both my index finger and my middle finger, and then I can pull both yarns up between my ring finger and my pinky. And now I'm ready to start knitting. So I'll knit the first stitch in blue. Bring both yarns forward and purl the next stitch in white. And bring both yarns to the back. Knit a stitch in blue, both yarns forward, Purl a stitch in the white and bring both yarns back. And you'll notice that separating the yarns makes it so that when I am knitting a stitch on the front of the fabric, that the back yarn is held behind that knit stitch. I bring both yarns forward and then when I'm purling the stitch that uh, belongs to the back fabric, the other yarn is in front of it. At some point, you're going to have to switch which color yarn is at the front and which is at the back so that you can create a color pattern. And I'm at that point right now, which means you need to reposition your yarns on your index finger. It doesn't matter which way you cross the yarns over each other to reposition them. So in this case, I'm gonna cross the blue yarn over the white. I just need to remember that the next time when I make the next transition to cross the blue yarn back in the opposite direction. If I alternate which way the yarns twist as I'm repositioning, it'll keep my yarns from getting tangled up. So I'll twist my blue yarn over the top of the white. And again, it doesn't matter which one goes over or under, just continue alternating the twist. And my yarn is positioned so that the yarn I'm gonna be knitting with at the front, the white is closest to my hand, the yarn I'm purling with, the blue is closest to my fingertip. And again, they come up between my in, or my ring finger and my pinky. And then I can continue on. So I'll knit a stitch, both yarns forward, purl in the blue, both yarns back. And again, I'm at the point where I need to reposition my yarns. 
whoops. And both my yarns back. It's time to reposition because now I have the knits, blue knits at the front. So again, since my blue yarn went over the white last time, I'm going to do the same thing. The blue yarn's going to come forward over the white this time. And I'll reposition. Tighten up my tension if I need to. So now the yarn I'm knitting with is the blue and it's towards my hand. The back fabric one is the white and it's closer to the tip of my finger. And I can continue on. I hope you enjoyed learning how to double knit and find it a little bit less daunting. If you'd like to try this technique in a pattern, head over to the shop section of thechilidog.com and look for my Burst Into Bloom scarf. Also, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Until we stitch again, happy knitting!